hey 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 everyone welcome and welcome back to the channel so today we're doing the next part of our color palette challenge and we're we are working in um, mythographic labyrinth i'm going to try to keep the color palette challenges in the mythographic books so um we're doing color palette number two and so today we are going to work on let me just open it so we're doing this page i have not finished my homework i am pre-filming this for when i leave um so today we're going to work on the trees the moss on this guy also the the tree parts and vines that's coming out of here it sounds like a lot but i promise it's not in the clouds so um it still will be roughly about the same amount of time as the other videos because some of this stuff will be the same colors. So we are going to start with, let me zoom in. We're gonna start with these tree pieces in the cubes. So it's one here, 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 up there, and the base of the trees. They are gonna be the same color. So we're going to be using the Prismacolor combo if you don't have Prismacolor, there's the Polychromos colors you can use and the Holbein colors you can use and the Light Fast colors. Also, the Pablos. So we're going to be using the Prismacolor combo today. Um, let's get started. So let me just make sure I have this right. Okay, so we have brown ochre, terracotta, and chocolate. So even with Prismacolors, I usually just base in the, in the first lightest color I will put down as a base. And you can do, you can go and base them all. Or you can go one by one. I'm just doing a couple and I have terracotta here. So I'm just, because these are very thin, I'm just kind of putting a little bit down and I'm just being very careful. I did pre-sharpen my pencil before we started. So um, make sure your pencil's sharp. You can even get in here with some fine liners if you want. It doesn't have to be pencil because these are very, very thin trees. I might not even, um, We'll see about the chocolate. We'll see how it works because these trees, these pieces here are very thin. So, and there's a piece right here. So you can skip the middle color and just do the light and the dark, the shadow color, because it's so thin. Or you can try to squeeze it all in there. I mean, it's up to you really. Um, I, I'm weird. I'm gonna try to squeeze them all in there, but I know that I probably don't need to because it is, like I said, a very thin piece of tree. So I'm gonna come in with chocolate and just, I mean, it kind of works. You probably don't need that middle color. You really don't. Um, but if you want to, just like for your sanity, <laughs> then go for it. Also, like I said, you can come in with fine liners, and what you can do is you can base it in pencil like normal, and then you can take your fine liner, right, and then come in with like dots for the shadows. And um, if you guys wanna learn how to do that, I can do a video on that. Um, I'm still kind of learning how to do it myself, but what when I learn something, I try to share it with you guys. But I also try to share it when I kind of know what I'm doing so I don't sound crazy, like I don't know what I'm talking about. <laughs> so, um, hopefully my light will bear with me through this video because it has been doing strange things. So we're going to go and base this tree. And I'm just going to base it. I didn't um, color all of the vines, I mean all of the tree pieces on the cube. And that's because I have a lot of things to go over in this video as far as 
um, the different parts we're coloring. So I didn't want to take up too much time coloring um, coloring all of the vines on the tree. Not the vines, the tree. Because there are some vines coming out of the cube, but we are just doing the parts that look like trees. So like there's some like vines. We're not coloring those brown. We're just doing the parts that look like trees. So here, here, there's one here in the middle and there's one here at the top. Those are the parts we're coloring. And then if you look on him, there's some trees down here. Um, don't try to be too perfect with the trees down here because they're very, 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 very tiny. Um, so just pick a brown and do those. Don't try to shade these trees. You won't be able to just put some brown. But um, like there's one here. So just kind of check to see where the trees are. Put a little brown and let it be that. But these ones here can be shaded. So I'm just gonna come in with terracotta. And I know some of you do light to dark, some of you do dark to light. Whichever way works the best for you, that is the way you can do it. Don't let someone tell you that it's only one certain way to do it. It is not because I do both. So um, do whichever one you feel like works the best. And that's that. And so I'm just going to shade this here. And I'd like to think the sun, for whatever reason, is coming off from that side. Uh, it might not be that way throughout the whole picture, so don't, you know, I'm not perfect when it comes to lighting, but I just do what looks good. And I feel like you should just do whatever you feel like looks good. Don't try to, unless you just really want to learn something like that, um, don't give yourself a headache. Coloring is supposed to be relaxing. So if it looks good to you, do not try and force figuring out where the light source is coming from. If it looks good to you, then go with it. That's what I'd like to say. So, um, you know, if you got those people that's telling you, oh, the light source is supposed to be over here, you did it wrong. You tell them, no, I didn't. I did it the way I wanted to do it because it's my coloring book and that's how it's gonna be and if you don't like it then you go color it the way you want to color it in your coloring book so that should nip that in the butt really quickly <laughs> um not that i have anyone telling me any of that I, I did have one person who every time i posted something um they had something negative to say and that person was dealt with accordingly so uh there's no worries about that. But these trees down here on the bottom, I'm not even going to worry about shading them. I just put some brown down on them. And I might even come in with some fine liner just to kind of bring the color out some more. Because fine liners are thinner. And I don't have to worry about um, messing those trees up down there or going outside the line. Because they are extremely small. So... But I do like the detail, how they added the small trees down there. So just to let you guys know, I am going to put some color down here so you guys can see which ones I'm talking about. So this one here will be colored brown because it's like a piece of tree um, that's coming out of this cube. And I'm only putting the base on these until I finish the gold part because I don't want this brown to run off into the cube before I finish coloring it. But so again, this one, this one, this one, and this one up here. These other ones are like vines or something. So make sure you have all the trees from the bottom down here. So here's one, here's one here, and here's one here. One is here. This one you can probably shade a little bit, but I wouldn't try it. I'd use like fine liner or something. There's one here. One here. One here. Here. And I think that's it. So you can see all the brown trees that 
and I don't want to zoom out too much because I want you guys to be able to see but they're all down here they're little trees that are on him hopefully I didn't miss any so those are the colors you are going to use for that I'll show them again so it's going to be burnt ochre terracotta and chocolate in that order so chocolate's going to be your shadow burnt ochre is going to be your highlight terracotta in the middle okay now we're going to move on to the green the greens um there is green in this palette <laughs> so um again using prismacolor apple green and if you guys are following along i would assume you guys already have the colors from the first one so you know if you're using a different set the colors are there um i'm thinking i don't know if you guys would like me to but i'm thinking of posting um in the facebook group and on my patreon the actual colors uh that that are used for each palette that i used um so you guys can kind of grab it from there if you need to so on him all of these little kind of scraggly pieces i'm gonna color it as moss now if it's actually moss i don't know but that's how i kind of see it so all of these pieces on him will be green and i'd like to think that it's moss uh, I, it could be like you know he's gotten a rough fight or something and they're all kind of pieces of scarring or something but I don't want to think like that I like to think he's a good guy and this is just moss he's like a um maybe he's like a forest kind of uh what did what did we say he was he's half human and half something I forgot someone told me the name but I forgot I think Linda told me. She's going to have to tell me again. Linda. <laughs> but uh, next color is going to be dark green. And again, the sun's coming from that way. So the shading is going to be on the opposite side of it. And you can shade this part however you like. Like I said, as long as you got these colors in here, you're fine. So there we go. Hopefully you guys can see that. I really don't want to zoom in too much, but I know some of you probably can't see, so it's okay. Me neither. I probably should start off with it zoomed in. But the problem is my camera does this autofocus thing and then it blurs it out. So it's really hard for you guys to see if I zoom in too much. But um, I guess I can kind of back out when I finish so you guys can still kind of see. Right, so we're just going to do all of these. And here... This one's kind of under his horn a little bit. So I put a little bit of the shading more towards that way. And then I actually have 90% um, warm gray because I couldn't find a dark enough green because I wanted it to be a bit dark for the shading and I couldn't find a dark enough green. So I went with warm gray, which is really good for shading. Um, any of the grays are really, if you can't find a darker color, darker than the one that you're looking for find a nice gray that goes with it that makes a good shadow or a nice brown you don't have to use black because black is too dark and sometimes when you use black it looks a bit weird because it doesn't have i mean it has like all the colors but it doesn't have it's too dark what I'm trying to get at. Um, now this 90% warm gray is dark, but you can still tell that it's not black and it blends with the color very well. 
Uh, I don't know if these greens are warm greens or not. I don't really know when it comes to like, oh, this is a warm green. This is a, I can tell some of them, but not all of them. Um, but I'd like to say that some of these greens are, this dark green is probably a cooler green. It's probably on the cooler side, but it still blends with this warm gray very well. So I'd like to think that um, this is a warm green, but don't quote me. Cause like I said, I'm not sure. So, and I don't, like I said, I, when I color, I'm, I'm learning, but I'm not learning to the point where I'm breaking out the, the super specifics. Like, okay, this is a warm color. This has to go with this. I'm not there yet. I don't think I want to be there yet. Um, at some point, yes, because when I start coloring my actual characters and such I want it to make sense I want it to look good but I also want it to make sense because I don't want to just throw any kind of color um on the page for that so at some point I do want to learn um but I also don't think I want to learn to the point where someone is telling me oh it's wrong because if I chose it I don't think it's wrong. I chose it for a reason. So I think as long as it looks good and I don't have a hundred colors on the page that just really doesn't make any sense, then um, I think I'm okay. I forgot to shade this one. This one doesn't have any warm gray on it. Yeah, so I think I'm okay if I do it that way. As long as... Um, like I said, it looks good. It doesn't look like I just close my eyes and pick the colors out of the box. As long as there's some method, then I think I'm okay. And I think you'd be okay too. So back to the lighter color. I'm just going to add this in here. And Prisma colors are really good because you can just kind of smush the colors together. You don't have to layer it. You just put them next to each other and then smush them together when you go to put the last bits on it. So he's going to have moss all over him. So uh, we haven't gotten to the actual coloring of him yet. This is being recorded for when I am not here. And I want the next part to be up when it's supposed to be. So I just want to make sure that the last thing that we need to do, or one of the last things um, when I get back, is coloring the bull itself. Hopefully I will have uh, most of my homework done, if not all of it, because when I do go to color the bull, if he is the last thing, um, aside from like the metallics and stuff like that, then I want that to be the last part. But the last part, obviously, is like the metallics and the glitter and the stuff. But I meant the last main part, I want it to be um, the bull himself. So we're going to do the same thing for these trees. So I'm going to do the smaller tree in the back. You guys will do the bigger tree. And I'm just going to base the whole tree. I mean, you guys are doing the whole thing yourself. You're just kind of following me if you are. And remember, there is a, um, a giveaway contest if you're following along and you finish along with us and so on and so forth. Um, there is a giveaway challenge for those who do finish and post it in the group. If you are following along, um, make sure that you are in the group, the Facebook group, or that you are following me on Instagram because you need to post and tag me in it and show me that you finish. Otherwise, it will not count. I need to see it. You can't just tell me that it's finished because I'm not gonna believe you if I don't see it. <laughs> um, so make sure you do that. And again, the groups are always in the description. Whenever I make a video, my descriptions usually always have my Facebook group, my Patreon, um, what else is down there? My Amazon list. I think my email might be there in case someone wants to send me an email about something. Uh, 
just the general stuff so if anyone has like any questions and then what I think I'm gonna do is like I said make I'm gonna do it for the first one because I didn't do it but I'm gonna do it for the first one this one and from here on out there will be um, kind of like a probably a picture I don't know if I'm gonna do a picture or if I'm going to do um, like a link where you can just print it out if you need to but I think I'm just gonna do a picture I'm just gonna take a picture of the sheet and you guys can print out the sheet the sheets available on my patreon or my Etsy store or you can just write it yourself down in your own notebook um, you just kind of post I mean not post you just kind of write fill it in basically uh, if you do it that way if you get it from patreon or patreon gets all my pdfs for free and if you don't want to become a patreon member then they are on my etsy store um that's also in the link in the description so the link to that is there and then you guys can just fill it out yourself but there's that tree now remember we have trees down here so for the ones down here, I'm probably not going to need the warm gray. I'm only going to need the two greens because you don't need, because they're so tiny, you don't need a lot. So you can just base it in the regular one and the lighter green. And he has moss everywhere. He has moss down here. So be sure when you guys are coloring the moss, you get all of it. Okay. There's trees. And then you just take the darker green and follow whatever direction you have your lighting going. Mine's coming from this way, so my shading's going to be on this side. So shading on this side, lighting on this side. Except for this cube, because it's got some weird stuff going on. So um, I'm just going to put some shading down here. And I can probably get the warm gray in some of these trees, but not all of them. So. Or maybe I could. I feel like the, the tree part is a little bit, you get a little bit more room with that. So maybe if you're feeling confident, you can put the warm gray there. I mean, we can try it. I don't think I need to sharpen it. So we can put a little bit. Don't get too crazy because um, it is very tiny. So just put enough. Whatever you feel like enough is to make it look the way you want it. There we go. And then come back in with the other one so you don't lose that nice dark green. Okay, and these trees are small, so small. Like, I commend him for even drawing this tiny. They're very small. So just do it like that. I'm going to try to finish some of this stuff up before the last part. It is quite a bit, but okay. So there's our tiny trees. We have our main tree and then we have the moss. So those again, the colors are apple green. Um, that's not it. Dark green and 90% warm gray okay now the next and final part I'm actually going to be switching it up using the whole lines so prepare for that now I'm going to color the clouds so we have beige we have cork and we have um, warm gray four so I'm just going to do the clouds over here in the front, the, these ones here. And I'm just going to put down beige. I'm just gonna lay I'm just gonna lay it down. And once I do this cloud, um because I don't want the videos really long. We're making good timing. We're at about 20 minutes. 
by the time I'm done with this, we should be at about 30, hopefully. So I'm gonna come in with cork and remembering that the sunlight is over there, I'm going to kind of put more of this color up here and then it's gonna kind of taper off towards that direction. So if that makes any sense, just kind of look and follow because the sun is on that side. So just kind of taper it off a little bit. You don't need a lot. Taper it off. Because we want these clouds kind of light. I might not even need this warm gray. Um, let me sharpen it a bit. I'm just gonna put a little bit because I don't think we need this warm gray too much. We might not need it at all, actually. So I'm gonna exit the, the warm gray and I'm just gonna use beige and cork because this cork is dark enough to where I can just go just like this, make it a little bit darker and then taper it off. But if you want that shade and you want it to be darker, you can take the warm gray and just lightly, very, very lightly go over it and then taper it off like that. Just very lightly. Not enough to even notice that it's there. Just very lightly. And then because these clouds, like I said, are, are going to be very light. And just kind of bring this down and out. This is the court, I mean, this is the beige. So this is the light color. And then I am gonna leave a little space at the top to keep it kind of white. So when you taper this off, it all should kind of blend in together. The sun is kind of taking over the clouds. So we don't want them extremely dark, okay? And then you can even come in with white. You know, I always have my white nearby. You can come in with white and kind of just put the white at the top of each one and then go back over it with beige so that it'll be really light, but it'll still be, it'll still be beige. It won't be just like you put white color pencil over it. So you put white over it and then you take your beige and you kind of just go over it a little bit, just a little, not a lot, so that it can kind of blend in. Now the clouds in the back, I might do metallic. So the ones that are further back and have those little lines in them, I was thinking, but there's not a lot of those. So I'm not really sure if I want to do that. I might just do all the clouds. Um, the same so again that's an option for you guys if you want the clouds to be the same or if you want them to kind of have um, that metallic look you can add some metallic you can even add some like um, like some glitter or a glaze over the cloud so they have like a little hazy kind of look you can do that as well. I'm just putting a little bit of this gray. Not a lot, okay? And then I took some of this white and I'm gonna go over it so I can put the beige over it and blend it together. Just like that, okay? So I'm going to bring it closer so you guys can kind of get a look at where I'm going with here. And so, um, with homework, and I have a lot of homework because as you can see, I've not even finished my cube. But, so the clouds, we have some clouds here behind him, underneath, and there's a few over here. Um, that's it for the clouds. So, you just have the trees, the clouds in the moths so me on the other hand i have this cube to finish <laughs> so um that's pretty much it for this next part so when you guys see the next video the cube should be done 
the trees should be done, the moss should be done, and then the only thing we have left is the bull and the metallics, okay? So, um, I'm going to play catch up, and I hope that when I come back, all my homework's done, and all we have is him, <laughs> okay? All right, guys, thanks for watching. See you on the next one. Bye!